There are four key categories of technologies, all of which are improving by double-digit, maybe triple-digit basis every year. Each one of them is disruptive in its own way, but they enable one another, and when combined with one another, they create a virtuous cycle of disruption. Um, solar energy. Now remember, solar energy is a technology. Solar PV is a technology, not a non-energy resource. Um, as silicon, as technology, it has gone down in cost by more than 200 times. So that's the cost curve of PV since 1970, 200 times. Um, and the installed base has doubled every two years since at least 1990. Doubled every two years. Remember what happens when you double every two years? How many more doublings until solar becomes 100% of the world's energy, not just electricity? Now, bear with me. I mean, we can do anything in a spreadsheet, right? So bear with me, conceptually, seven more doublings. That's 14 more years until solar is 100% of the world's energy. Hmm. But can it do that? Really? Come on. Right? Can it continue to grow at this rate? When you compare it to the main sources of energy, of power generation, essentially they've all gone, even at today's prices, up by 6 to 16 times over the last, since 1970. Which means, since 1970, on a unit cost basis, solar has improved by about 3,000 times relative to nukes and gas, 1,200 times relative to coal, and 2,100 times relative to petroleum. And again, solar as a technology is going to keep going down. Okay? Now, business model innovation is also important. In the U.S., what enabled the residential and commercial market was a model called zero money down solar. Essentially, a company comes in, they install the panels on your rooftop, whether you're you know, a company or you're uh, a home. They pay for it, they maintain it, they own it. All you do is basically you take no financial or technology risks. And when you look at the, how the market took off in the US, it started when that third party finance, that's at the residential and commercial scale, right? So business model innovation is very important. And there are many business models, financial models, that can apply to solar and wind. Now, the mantra for four decades in solar has been something called grid parity, right? The point at which solar on the rooftop, unsubsidized, is cheaper than the, what the utility provides. And I think uh, grid parity is very important, um, but it's not the tipping point. Grid parity. I mean, according to Deutsche Bank, by the end of next year, solar will be at grid parity in 80% of the world's market. 80% by the end of next year. That's pretty good, right? I mean, it's not too bad. Um, and it's going to continue to go down, solar. So, you know, do the numbers. But I think, and of course, this is going to accelerate the demand for solar, which has been going up at 41% per year. Now, just to remind you, all the things that I've talked about, batteries, EVs, self-driving, uh, in solar, are technologies. The adoption curve for technologies is never linear. When you read the reports from the IEA, from the OECD, and so on, they will tell you 1% EV penetration, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, right? And maybe at some point in 2040, it'll get to 10% or whatever. Well, same thing for solar. But whether they do it on purpose or, or they don't understand technology, I don't know. But I will tell you, every single technology in the history of the universe, or at least the universe that I know, um, goes as an S-curve. So it may take decades to get to that tipping point, but when it does, essentially it accelerates and it takes 80% of the market within weeks, months, or a few years, and then boom, disruption happens. And that's how Kodak went in two years, right? That's how the horse went, 13 years. It's an S-curve, right? So what's going to be the tipping point for all of these technologies, and, and now for solar? I call it not grid parity, 
but God parody. And this is not a religious thing. By the way, what is God parody? The point at which rooftop solar, no matter where you are, and you can be in Oslo with 900 hours of sunshine, uh, San Francisco with 1,600, or Santiago with 2,400, at some point, rooftop solar, unsubsidized, is going to become cheaper than the cost of transmission. When solar on your rooftop becomes cheaper than the cost of transmission, essentially, even if central generation generates at zero, even if somewhat magically sometime in the next 30 years somebody invents fusion at zero, of course, fusion has been 30 years away for 30 years, so, um, and it's 30 years away. Even if fusion comes in at zero, when you add the cost of transmission, it won't be able to compete with solar on your rooftop. That is going to happen in every single large market in the world by about 2020. And solar plus storage, remember storage is going at an even faster rate than solar is? Solar plus storage on your rooftop is going to be cheaper than transmission by 2022. And that's where the cost, the, the S-curve, is just going to take off. Boom. Disruption. Disruption is going to happen everywhere. Okay? In Australia, they're already at this point, by the way. Solar on the rooftop, unsubsidized, is already cheaper than the cost of transmission. So this is not something that's going to happen in the future. This is something that's already happening today. Okay? Now, that's God parity. And at that point, every form of self, of, of central generation, nukes, gas, coal, <coughs> gone. Right? Because it doesn't make any sense, even if they generate at zero. Now, What about utility scale? Are cities going to generate 100% of their energy? No, not all cities. We're still going to have data centers, right? We're still going to have the Googles and the Facebooks and so on. We're going to have aluminum smelters and so on, so we are going to need utility scale. What's going to happen there? I'll tell you what is already happening. Solar around the world, unsubsidized, is coming in at five cents. Five cents solar unsubsidized. In Nevada, in Saudi Arabia, 4.9 cents unsubsidized. Nothing, no new form of energy, nothing can compete with that. Right? Just if you want an indication of what that means, solar or anything at 5.8 cents is the equivalent of oil at $10 a barrel. Good luck competing with that, right? And it, it's equivalent to gas at five. Good luck competing with solar, because look at that curve. It's still going down, and it's still going to go down in the foreseeable future, okay? And so by 2030, it's going to be over. And this is not in the future. This is happening right now as we speak. Thank you.